Greetings fellow humans, Mad Mark here with another transmission with Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at a board that I've already uh, modified. I think I did some of it on video and uh, the other I didn't. But this is a, it's been fully modified. I did a silicone pour in here. Um, this is a, uh, the actual Gamma K LK67. Um, this is the three mode version. But if we go ahead and uh, weigh it up here, we can see that this is a, definitely heavier than your stock it's almost a kilogram uh minus 80 or so grams but i have uh aco original white see vintage white um in here and the stock plate i did do the tempest mod i did, do believe i also did the pe foam mod but this comes with this standard steel plate which I just thought was just going to be the only option for the LK67 unless I actually designed and 3D printed my own. Well, I came across this the other day, uh, thanks to a link a Redditor shared. Um, AliExpress has uh, extra plates for the TM680. And this is a, uh, a polycarbonate plate, I do believe. Um, and I'm, I'm more... I lean more towards plastics for plates. I, I do like the, the particular timber uh, that they add to most keyboard kits. Now this one does have pretty um, deep sound or loud sound for sure. We can agree on that. And how much of it is due to that steel plate, that, those keys striking against the steel plate so obviously we're dealing with a tray mount keyboard so we're not looking for flex we want to see what kind of sound difference we're going to get when we uh, go ahead and um, uh, change out the plate sorry about that my camera just decided to freeze on me anyway um, so yeah we have a uh, aftermarket plate does look like it's gonna fit I'm curious to see what kind of sound differences we're going to get because i mean this is a budget kit but can be made to sound pretty good um i do have a sound test of this as it is right now uh, that i'll include next to the sound test with this one so without further ado let's go ahead and get into it huh Now to take off the top plate, always clip the top part of the case off first so that you don't break the mode switch. It likes to pop up, so you're probably going to have to hold up the parts that you're trying to get up so that they don't pop back in because it does want to stay together. But once you get enough of them off, you'll see that it comes off nice and easy. Make sure to be careful of the two studs that go on the side post over here. And now we have our steel plate. Obviously this plate has gotten beaten up pretty good. Now we're going to have to take these out. Oh, that one's interfering with the PCB pad. The PE foam pad I should say. All right. Now we're gonna need the stabilizer, so let's go ahead and get these puppies out of here. Now, to get to these screws, and we're also gonna have to uh, take the plate off the PCB and uh, screw it, attach it to that. All right, I need a couple more tools. I will be back. All right, so let's go ahead and take the screws that are holding this plate into place. And we want to be careful as we are going into plastic uh, studs. So we want to make sure not to strip the screw head and not to strip the actual column where the screw is going into. So we've got two, three, four, 
four. Seven, eight. That's what I thought. All right. So now we want to make sure that we don't break this mode switch. We want to pull up and out. See, and that just drops the mode switch. We're just gonna keep that right there because it's little. And then we wanna make sure not to pull too hard because we do need to disconnect the battery. All right. Now we've got this off. Let's go ahead and set this aside. Oh, look at that. But uh, you can see I did a pretty, I mean, solid pour of uh, silicone in here. That's what's adding all that weight. I mean, obviously the battery as well. But for this, we're going to have to now, unfortunately, but we can bring it back. Um, as we have to unscrew this, how many screws are putting this in place? I think it might only just be like three or four. So let's go ahead and see. All right, because we're probably not going to need these to go back in as there's no studs on that plate. So here's one, but we're gonna go ahead and just keep them in a separate spot. And well, they're flat, so we should be okay with not messing those together, mixing those together. And here's another screw. I think these are the only two screws, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. Let's see though. There seems to be one more, or maybe two. I don't see anything on this side. Might be just one more in the middle. Yep, there it is. And we don't want to press down too hard because we do have the knob keeping the plate above the uh, surface, so don't press down too hard. You could cause damage to the PCB. All right. So let's see what that does. Yep, that's it. But just real quick, um, a quick trick. I know most of the times stock plates on budget boards are going to be steel. There have been a few instances where they're aluminum. It's rare. But if you don't know what you're dealing with, pull out a magnet. If it's steel, the magnet's going to stick. If it's aluminum, the magnet won't. So it's just an easy way. Um, it's something I thought I'd just uh, yeah, let everybody know. But it's just a quick way to check. Got this. And... Where is our plate? Oh, it's over here. But now what we've got to do before we insert our plate, we're gonna to want to tape it off because I'm not sure these stabilizers are gonna be, oh, clean this off. Yeah, this is actually the first LK67 board that I ever purchased now that I'm looking at it and remembering. But just out of curiosity, let's see how tight these fit because uh, we did have a nice tight fit on the other one so much so I was afraid I was gonna break them when I was pulling them off. Wow, I don't think we'll actually need any tape on these, surprisingly enough, because they are on there. It's almost like these were meant for this plate, but did I do it? Oh, yeah, okay, no, I make sure I didn't do it on the other side. So let me see if they all work this way. That would be nice. Saves us one step and makes it a little bit cleaner. Oh yeah, these are on there pretty good. I think that's gonna work. Well, I 
takes one step out of the equation. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually quite surprised and pleased with how well they fit on there. It's almost like they were made for the the this aftermarket plate rather than their actual stock steel plate. Well, that one, that one's gonna need a little tape. Maybe I heard it when I was opening it up, but that one will, it is a bit loose. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put a piece of tape there just to make it happy. See, now we've just added a little bit more width to the plate. So now when we grab these stabilizers and put them in here, Part of it that clips onto the plate is going to be grabbing onto that and then we can go ahead and actually take those locking tabs and push them out and now you can see it's a lot sturdier I mean it's moving but that's moving with the plate so before it was a little loose and now they're on their tight all right so thankfully we only had to do that to one stabilizer and it does appear they all still actuating properly oh. all right so now because we don't have studs on here we are going to be using the switches of studs so let's go ahead and start arranging everything in place now, let's not forget about this mode switch that we're going to have to worry about when we fish it back in there, but we'll take care of that when we get to it. I want to make sure this also goes on there flat, I'm trying to align it with the holes even though we're not using them. I want to make sure that they're lined up because they do need to be lined up. Ooh. Gotta love it when it goes easy into a plate. That's another reason why I like plastic plates. All right, we're about ready to put this back in. That thankfully went a lot easier than I thought. I've had some um, plates when I use the switches as anchors that tend to uh, put one in and another one pops out so it has it becomes like a bit of a puzzle so first let's go ahead and connect the battery I just want to make sure what orientation it should go like this there's no rule sometimes I've seen them with the pins sticking up sometimes I've seen them the other way so all right let's get you in there all right you are in now what we want to do all right so we were able to push it in there and as you can see we can still turn it and we're just going to put it to the off position for right now so it's not turning on and off and now it's time to screw it back together all right so now we should be able to just snap this back on here tight fit and there we are with the PC plate on the TM680 or LK67 I'm sorry this is a Gamma K LK67 TM680 I believe is the clone but nowadays it's hard to tell all right so now we're going to go ahead and load you back up to get tightened down and we have our keys our keys are a combination actually of a milk and honey SA set and a um, SA set from uh, KP Republic and they're not quite the, f the same SA profile set but I like the uh, the combo 
So I went with it. I think this goes. And here we are. So we have now um, I definitely think the sound has gotten louder, the perhaps a more a bit more poppy than talking, but I I think I like it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a sound test of it now. I'd love to get your guys' feedback. What do you think? Do you think the steel plate works better in this particular setup or did the PC plate help? Um, in this situation. I'm curious to see everybody's thoughts on this. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do a sound test so that we can do a comparison. Um, I'm probably just going to do super cuts. I'm gonna, uh, first it'll be the stock, then it'll be this one, and then I'll super cut between the two. But anyway, I just wanted to give you guys um, options. I know a lot of people, I mean, there was one Facebook poll 2019 that out of 44 respondents, uh, six people said that, or seven, sorry, seven people said that they had issues with their PCB. So everybody took that as, oh, all LK67s are bad. Well, I own uh, quite a few. I mean, just offhand, here's another one that I can pull out. Uh, now, granted, most of the ones I do buy are wired, and they say those are the ones that I have the most issues. I have yet to have one die on me. So I don't know. I mean, maybe their first revision did have some issues, but I bought this one in uh, 2021, I want to say, and I haven't had any issues with it. It still works. I still use it. I love it. I, I keep coming back to it and modding it. It's the first one that I bought, plain white. Um, what can I say? I, oh, yeah, here's another one as well. Like I said, I have quite a few LK67s, and I've also built quite a few LK67s for friends because as soon as they see this keyboard and they're like first first usually there's one or two reactions either ah I want it or that's great but what am I supposed to do when I need a function uh <laughs> they're like what so anyway I still think that this is a great board nowadays um especially for the price i've seen this as low as 45 dollars though i've seen it as high as 80 and 90 dollars which is mm, below 50 or around 50 dollars i think this is still a great kit um especially if you're looking on the wire the wireless three mode version um now it does not have a spot to store the bluetooth so i'm sure i still have it in a box somewhere but mm. But at least it has Bluetooth. It, I believe it is a Bluetooth 5, not 5.1, but it has pretty good range. I've used it before. I'm using a tester now for my Android TV, but I used it for my Android TV for a while, and I loved that it had the volume knob. So um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with the sound test of, of this uh, LK67 now with a, um, with a PC plate. See what you guys think. Until next transmission. Keep calm, keyboard on.